So if you're using version 1.4 of Inkscape or later, you may notice that there's an unfamiliar tool in your tools menu known as the LPE tool. And the reason I call it an unfamiliar tool is because Although it didn't exist before version 1.4, there doesn't seem to be any kind of announcement or documentation about it in the release notes. In fact, I wasn't even aware of this tool until someone in my Inkscape master class pointed it out and asked about it. So, now that I am aware of it, I've spent some time playing around with it and figuring out how it works, and that's what today's video will be about. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating what the LPE tool is and how to use it. Before we get started though, if you want to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work, and yes, that now includes the LPE tool. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. So in short, the LPE tool is a tool that allows you to draw certain types of geometric shapes that are otherwise difficult to draw using the standard tools. And from what I can tell, it basically functions as a shortcut to some of the experimental path effects. To show you what I mean, if you double click your selection tool, you should get your preferences menu. Now I'm going to come over here and type in path effects into the search bar, and you should see this option that says show experimental effects. If this is not enabled, go ahead and enable this and then close out of the menu and restart Inkscape. And once you restart Inkscape, you can go to Path and come over here to Path Effects. And if you, you first have to draw a shape, so let me draw a shape. And then I'm going to click the Path Effects drop down. You can come down here and you'll notice that there is a new segment for experimental path effects. Now what this tool basically does is it works as a shortcut to some of these new path effects. So let's now go into how the tool works. So if you come over here and select your LPE tool, you'll notice that up here in the toolbar we have six different functions, or seven rather, seven different ways that this tool functions. And I'm going to show you each of these. So I'm going to start off with the first option over here, which is the line segment tool, which basically allows you to create a line based on the placement of two points, which sounds similar to how the pen tool works, but it's a little different and I'll have to demonstrate to show you how. So first, let me show you why I would use this tool. So let's say I have this example logo here. I'm going to right click this and lock this to the canvas so that I can't mess with it when I'm doing what I'm about to do. And let's say I want to draw a line that matches the angle of this edge right here. Now this isn't one of the standard 15 degree angles that you would normally use while holding the shift or control key with the pen tool. So I could use the measurement tool to measure what that angle is, which is kind of like a more complicated way of doing things, or I can use the LPE tool to create this line. So let me show you what I mean. First I'm going to enable snapping. And then I'm going to come over here to the LPE tool and I'm going to choose this option right here known as the line segment option. And what I will do is I'll snap to this corner and click to add a point. And then I'll come over here and snap to this corner and click to add another point. And it's going to create a line. However, you can't see the line because there's no stroke applied. So what you have to do is come down here to the fill and stroke area or the color swatches and hold shift and click on black and you can see it added a line there to that segment. And the benefit of doing that is now that I now I have an, a line segment that matches that angle without having to manually draw it. Now I could do this with the pen tool, but the line would only be as long as this segment right here. So this tool allows you to create a longer segment. And if you want to edit this line further, you can come over to your nodes tool. And I'm going to enable this setting up here that says show path outline. That's going to show us where the outline is. And you can just click and drag these points to change the angle and location of this line. And once you're finished and you're happy with how it looks, you can finalize it by going to path, object to path. And that's how that setting works. Now let's go over the next section of this tool, which would be the circle by three points tool. And this basically allows you to draw a circle by placing three points on your canvas. And to show you an example of when this would be useful, let's say I have this triangle here on my canvas and I want to draw a circle going around the triangle in such a way that each corner of the triangle touches the edge of the circle perfectly. So if I were to try to do this with the standard tools, it's really complicated to do. So if I were to draw my circle, I can try to place it where it should be, but you can never quite get it right. 
And to show you what I mean, I'm gonna convert this to a path and I'll even turn on snapping. I'll try to snap this top edge right here and I'll come over here and try to scale this down. And it's really hard to accomplish. Even with snapping enabled, it's not quite perfect. That's where the LPE tool comes in handy. So let me get rid of this circle now. I'll come back over here to my LPE tool. And again, you're gonna want snapping enabled for this. And I'm gonna choose the circle by three point setting. And I'm gonna to snap to this corner and click to add a point. And then I'll do the same thing at this corner and then at this corner. And now we've created a circle that goes around that triangle perfectly. And I can reduce the opacity so you can see it better. If I zoom in, you can see the corners of this triangle touch the edges of the circle perfectly. And each of these three, seg these three circle segments that go around the triangle are symmetrical. They're all exactly the same. If I were to take them and rotate them around, they would all be the same width and height. Now let's have a look at the next setting, which would be the circle by two point setting. Now this works similarly to the previous setting where we were drawing circles by three points, although this one allows you to draw the circle by two points. And unlike the circle tool where the circle is drawn by diameter, with this setting you're drawing the circle based on its radius. So let's say we had these three triangles here and we want to draw a circle going around these three triangles. I could draw the circle based on its radius and start here and end here and we'd end up with the circle that goes around it perfectly. So let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna grab the LPE tool and I'll choose this setting up here known as the circle setting. And I'm gonna to snap to the center point here here, click to add a point, and then I'll come over here and click to add another point. And if you notice, we now have a circle and I can lower the opacity of that. And you could see everything lines up perfectly. I could zoom in to show you the corners and the edges touch everything here as expected. And another thing with this tool is you can go to your nodes tool and you can take these points and move them around to get different results. So I can move this over here. And if you notice, we still end up with these geometrically correct segments right here where the corners touch the edge of everything perfectly. Now in my world of logo and branding design, I can't really think of any examples of when this would be useful, but maybe those of you who do more technical types of drawings would find a better use for this. So if so, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about that. Next up would be the parallel line setting, which allows you to draw parallel lines according to two points that you place on your canvas. And to show you what I mean, I can grab my LPE tool, and if I enable this setting over here known as the parallel setting, I could zoom in and create two points on my canvas. Let's say I'll go with this point here, and then this point up here, and I can press enter on the keyboard to close the path. It's gonna create a parallel line, although you can't see it yet because there's no stroke applied. So hold shift and click on the black swatch down here to apply the stroke, and you can see we've generated a parallel line based on those two points that we placed. Now if I grab my nodes tool, I can edit this further. I can move this line over here using this node, and then I could take these original nodes and move them around. And if you notice, as I do that, the line changes, sort of like a cloned object would. Now again, I don't really know an example of when I would use something like this, but then again, everybody uses Inkscape for a variety of different reasons. So if you could think of a use for this sort of thing, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about that. Next up would be the perpendicular bisector setting, which works almost the same as the parallel setting. The only difference is that it draws a perpendicular line rather than a parallel line. So to show you how that works, let me enable that first, and then I'll snap to this corner, and I'll come over here and snap to this corner, and then again, I'm gonna hold shift and click on the black swatch to apply the black stroke so that we can see the line that's drawn. And now I can grab my nodes tool. You'll notice we have a line that goes perpendicular to the original uh, points that I placed there. And I can move these original points around. And if you notice, as I move these points around, that line stays perpendicular to those two points. And it doesn't matter where they move them. I can move either line around my canvas like that. So that is how that setting works. Now let's have a look at the next setting, which would be the angle bisector, which allows you to draw three points and then draw a line coming from the angle of those three points. So if I enable that tool, I can create three points that match the angle of this shape right here. I can start here to place point number one. I can come over here for point number two and then point number three over here. And if I hold shift and click the black swatch, you can see we now have a line coming from the angle between those three points. And if I grab my nodes tool, I can move either of these nodes around. And if you notice, the line always stays at the angle between those three points, no matter what I do with these three points. So I can move them around 
however needed, and I'll always have that line at that angle that's needed there. And then finally, we have the mirror symmetry setting, which basically works as a shortcut to the mirror symmetry path effect, which I've gone over in older tutorials, but it is a very useful setting, and this tool now gives us a shortcut for it. So let me quickly show you how this works. So for my example here, let's say I'm drawing a smiley face, and I've drawn the first eye. Now I want to draw the second eye so that it is symmetrical to the original eye. What I could do is I could select both of these circles right here and then group them together by going to Object and selecting Group. And it's important to group these together because this tool only works on single objects. So if you want to apply it to multiple objects, you have to group those multiple objects together and then edit those objects within the group while using it. So with that object selected, I'll come over here to the LPE tool, and now I will click on the mirror symmetry setting. And if you notice, it creates another copy of the original object over here to the right, and we have these three nodes that we can edit. I'm going to come over here to my nodes tool, and the node in the center allows us to change the distance between the two objects, and the nodes on the top and the bottom allow us to change the rotation of the two objects. So if you wanted to move this around and change its position and rotation, you can do so using these tools right here. I like the angle as it is, but I am going to change the spacing so it's about this far apart. And the cool thing about this is that you can now edit the original circle, and any edit that you make to the original grouping of circles will also be applied to these grouping of circles over here. So I'm going to select these nodes and I'll turn on the transformation handles and I'm going to move these nodes down and if you notice this one moves down as well and then maybe I'll scale this node down like that and that one scales down as well. And I could take this larger circle here and take these two nodes and maybe scale them out and if you notice the same thing applies over here. So this is a really useful tool. I can think of many instances when I would use something like this. It's a good way to create mirrored objects in such a way that they are symmetrical. So I think that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can use the new LPE tool in Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.